Oh, everyone know who is Kit Haring. Everyone know what is pop art. Everyone knows that Kit Haring used to be surrendered by Rocksteady, by B-Boys back in 80s. And mm. he just loved it and he get inspired from it. He opened shop in Manhattan called pop, pop Shop. So here we go, some original pieces. What? This one is signed by Kit Haring. If you're not in Chicago. watching and listening, get your papers on this. Killer Keller official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Aye, aye, aye. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or central as you need to be. Come on, cuz, you don't need to be anywhere else. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers, people have been spotting us from the day. Subscribe, get your finger on that button and give it a push. Yeah, subscriptions free, as is the Keller Vision app, which you can get free download iPhone, Android, for all your street culture, sport, and arts. Inside the house today, the world is full of characters, every scene has its unique characters. But I very rarely come across a, a, a gentleman of sorts that uh, not only professes in b-boyisms, um, but has uh, imported himself over here as one hell of a, uh, a collector of the finer things in fashion, uh, combined with two uh, shops named Check It, um, which you can find in the West End and in East End. He's here to join us, talking breaking, talking fashion, talking more. People with prints inside the place. What's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> Thank you, brother, for having me. How are you? Chilling, chilling, chilling. Happy to be here, bro. All right, so that tequila definitely did the ju- job, didn't ah. it? <laughs> <laughs> Best welcoming ever. Yeah. yeah. Some proper stuff. Thank you for having that in. We saw, uh, we saw each other at the uh, Red Bull BC1. That's what's up, yeah. yeah. For those that don't know about the Red Bull BC1, um, get out of the hole you're hiding in and uh, get involved in what's set to be two years almost of you know non-stop heavy b-boy and it's going on in, in the world globally. And uh, Red Bull BC are definitely the higher contenders of, uh, of the game so far. It's crazy, bro, what's happening with Red Bull. Like, I mean, it's becoming global. It's helping young kids to just stay on the right path. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They're just pushing, they like going out of the streets, closing themselves in, like, you know, gym and just, mm. like, trying to grind, mm. trying to score this level, like, to go to top 16, mm. go on the main stage. It's beautiful, bro. Like, mm. I've been lucky to get wild card this year. Yeah, you did. You know That's what I'm saying? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we roll. <laughs> I'm grateful for that. UK mm. B-Boy Champs, respect. Yeah, big up B-Boy Champs. And, um, and yeah, let's see what's next year going to bring, you know, about mm. that. Mm. What's the feeling? Because obviously, you know, Red Bull is no mean feat, as is the B-Boy champs, as is Undisputed, um, and a lot of the other, you know, main events. What goes through your mind when entering into an arena like that? I just want to represent myself, like, 100%. Like, I want to... I want to give people good performers. Like, mm. I don't really care about winning the battle. Obviously, mm. you have that on the back of your head. Like, you mm. want to smoke someone. It's mm. part of the game. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I feel like as long as you true to yourself, like, for me, for example, I love to looking fresh. Like, mm. you know, you can check. Last yeah. battle for Barbary outfit, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. how we roll. Yeah, fuck the moves. Check the, check the drip, right? <laughs> but, like, I feel like, you know, like, 100%... You need to be prepared for your like opponent. Mm. You want to smoke him, but I think if you're not gonna let it be, you're gonna block yourself. Even if you 100% prepare, let it be as in in what way? Like just like don't control your body too much. You know what I'm saying? Like let the music control you. What I've never ever thought of it like that. But it's the same with beatboxing, isn't it? You you have to know your craft enough to understand the flow. Exactly. It's like the music is the key, basically. Nothing besides, nothing above. There's like no easy way, but also it's very simple. Mm. If you just like love the music, like, you know, it's like you need to imagine to be like this young kid and just chilling to the music and exactly you need to do this on the stage. And the thing is like for some people, crowd gonna block you, but for some other people, crowd gonna make you open yourself easier for that you know why is that do you think do you, do you think the do you think the crowd are um uh uh knowledgeable enough for, or is it more about how you right i'll give you an example 
uh, in graffiti, often it's like you it's the people with the most notoriety and criminality mm -hmm. which get more loved than people with the style and technical ability. Do you think there's something to be said for that in b-boying as well? Like attitude over style? I feel like it's changing, bro. Like it's really changing. But like if you're real, people going to ha have it. Like people going to mm -hmm. feel it. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like if you like, if you don't want to be prepared too much, but you want to let it go, you want to freestyle. Bro, people love when you freestyle. They love it, don't they? They love it because you're trying to express yourself the way that you don't control yourself completely. Yeah. And people get it. Like people are like surprised. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then they have it. Like they, they just like. You're gladiator for them, basically. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's gladiatorial. Yeah. Because sometimes you can turn that um, uh, that uh, loss around to a really significant win just by being the undercard. Bro, like, it, it's like, it's, it's beauty of it. Like, even it's going Olympics right now, yeah? Mm. It's like crazy big stage. So much money pumped into it. But like... Bro, there's like underground cats that they bro, they will smoke those guys. They just don't show up. Like they don't need it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They just live for it. Like they, it's like bro. Some people live for this culture and like, and they they will look amazing on the stage, but some people will never look good on the stage. Even they ultra good prepare because they don't have it, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can mm. fake it. You can try, but I don't think so. It's 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 gonna happen, bro. Dude, you just said a bunch of things in one sentence that's got me thinking in loads of different lanes of conversation. Right, first of all, first of all, you said there were some people out there that are underground as fuck and just would not entertain yeah. those events. 100%, bro. Like, why they will? Like, they don't need it. They're so proud of themselves. They're so happy. But they surrender by good people. They don't need a bigger crowd. They're happy, bro. Like, the blog make them, you know what I'm saying? They stay. Mm. They stay where they belong, bro. Mm. Like, well, I'm coming from 60,000 people, city, bro. And I, I'm like, I've been the greatest there already. I don't need to be there. Mm -hmm. Like, But I always have love for it. And I can, rest, I can come there. And my people are always there. But, like, I came to London. And I don't need to be on the stage. Because, like... Bro, I'm proud of myself, you know what I mean? Mm. And I feel like breaking is just the way to express, but like I made my life happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't need it's because it's ego game in the end, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you've like, got to have one. You've got to have an yeah, ego to yeah, be doing. But like when you are happy who you are, where what's the point of your life where you are, you're probably gonna look good on the stage, bro. Like hundred mm. percent. It's like boxing, isn't it? It's, it's a good a, a good boxer is a happy boxer. That's the real. Um, so, 60,000 people. Whereabouts are you from in Poland? Zory. That's how we roll. <laughs> What's up? Shout out to Zory. <laughs> My lovely city, man. <laughs> Waiting for that one to roll. One hour from Krakow, half an hour from Katowice. Love to Zory, bro. Yeah, come My on. My hometown, bro. Come on, and, and your homegirls here as well? Yes, Olivia. How, that's how we roll. Come on, Olivia. Recording us. Yeah, she's recording. <laughs> trust, trust me, we got the po Polish tourist board inside the house. <laughs> she's only here for a day, right? And Olivia was like, Olivia was like, uh, you, you want tequila? Straight away. Yeah, you know yeah, 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 yeah. She, she, she's, she's In so, the morning. She's so Polish breakfast. tourist right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Polish breakfast, you yeah, know, yeah. like shot of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> um, your your country is widely regarded. I mean, first of all, big shout out to Pezet. That's my boy. Ooh, yeah, that's my guy. Warsaw. That's my guy. That's my Warsaw. guy. Warsaw. Warsaw. I've done a lot of work with Pezet. That's my boy. Um, widely regarded as one of the more kind of purest of um, more authentic places of attitude towards the culture of hip hop, isn't it? Like Poland, you mean Poland? Yeah, hardcore. Bro, it's just like, you know, 100%. I don't know. I feel like Eastern Europe is like, in general, like, yeah. so... Rocking. Rocking the old way, you Where's know what I mean? Where's that come from? Where's that attitude come from, though? It's coming from, like, each of us, like, you have nothing, but you're making everything out of nothing. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. It's like, like, for example, like, the way ghetto look here, for us, it's just like, we don't even calling it like hood because we don't have nothing besides that. You know what I mean? Mm. You have just people from like blocks, tower of blocks, and you have people from houses. We, we don't, we don't, we don't have names like, we calling it Oshedle. Oshedle means like 
you know, like packed towels all around. And then you have people from mm, houses. And that's that's the only thing that we see, you know, between us. And, and very often those people from houses, they are hanging out with us. We don't have, like, and that's what's coming from. I don't know. It's just like, you know, it's so cold, bro. But the same bleak, way. Bleak, bleak. Bl- yeah. But the same way, it's beautiful. I love it, man. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, I'm anyone that is a fan of the podcast. No, I'm, I'm banging to like brutalism architecture. That shit. Come to inc- Poland, yeah, bro. Well, I, that's gonna... what I love, right? So, so I, when I remember very well touring Poland, and in, and bleak is the right word. There's some places where um, just by default. Um, I mean, closest comparable, I guess, is like Queensbridge in in New York, but it's more it's raw than that. It's bigger probably there, bro, yeah. than in Poland because you know, grandma shouting out of tenth floor, dinner, you know, yeah, saying yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. like this. It's just make all of this. It's beauty, bro. Like, is it dangerous? No, I would never say it's dangerous, bro. Like, the first time when I felt scared was like when I experienced what it what it is to be scared. It was in London, like really, like honestly, like I mean. You know, besides like violence, like um, knife crime, blah, 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 blah. It happened in Poland. We just don't really talk about it like that. Like it's it's a big thing in London. Obviously, it's, mm. it's very bad. And well, because the p- propaganda of that makes it bigger. Propaganda is terrible, bro. Yeah, it makes like, it bigger. It's yeah. like, it's to be honest, out of my group of friends from all kind of like things like fashion, I never heard no one get hurt in London, like to be mm. honest, you mm. know what I'm saying? Mm. But like the thing is, I experienced these things in Poland, but I never was like... We were more scared of police, bro. Because mm. police, we were like 20 of us outside and police coming and they would be like, you know, don't play around. And like, here is different. You mm. cool with police, but then like you, you Killing know... Killing each other, you yeah, know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's like that, bro. Like, I don't know. It's a beautiful country, but like, I love UK, bro. Yeah. To UK. Yeah, yeah. If I will not love this country, you I will not be, be here, here bro. Simple be here. as that, bro. And there's something that. They, 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 I, I think... don't get it. Like when people saying like they hate something, something, but they staying here, bro. Well, Ivia said, you know, it's it's the energy of the people that that makes it like a moth to flame. You know, like you don't really get that anywhere else, to my understanding, in the world. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Maybe, maybe New York. I don't know. Wish to go there, bro, and they like. <sighs> Well, this brings us segueing in nicely to what hey, we have on the table. Let's go. Because this is some shit. Because at the start, I did mention that uh, my guy was uh, very much up in the fashion game right now. And trust me, the game is just level upping here. Uh, would you like to? You, you explain yeah, what's yeah, going yeah, on Yeah, of here. course. So everyone know who is Kit Haring. Everyone know what is pop art. Everyone knows that Kit Haring used to be surrendered by... Rock steady by B boys back in eighties, and mm. he just loved it, and he get inspired from it. He opened shop in Manhattan called Pop go. Pop Shop. So here we go, some original pieces. What? This one is signed by Kit Haring. If you're not in Chicago. watching and listening, get your papers on this <sighs> crazy, yeah. crazy uh, military shaped uh, hat. That's yeah. what kind of hat is that? So basically, they did like um. Kit Haring did like um, in Chicago mural with 500 students back in 1989, and one of the students gets signed by him basically. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So got lucky signed. to buy it. Yeah. Yeah, you got lucky to buy that. Look at that, and it's so well rendered. Crazy. I mean, fat, I'm shocked I'm touching the thing. It's yeah. crazy. Bro. Right. What have we got next? And this one's got an interesting story. Yeah. So it. this one was just like um, workshops for students. Uh, Yo, 1986. What? That is bonkers. Yeah. You can Stop still it. see, like, you know, marks from painting and stuff. Like, it's crazy. Yo, that's crazy. Try to get these t shirts. Impossible. Hardcore. Hardcore. Man, so where did you get the, Where did this one come from? Everything overseas, bro. Yeah. Everything overseas. Then like it's this one here. And this one is from Italy. What? Oh, yeah. This is a big City boy. Sign too. Sign. 1986, man. It's crazy. Let me send that over to this one. You gotta see it. You gotta see it to believe it, baby. Yo, that's crazy. Get the fuck out of here. Wow. Um, so here we go. It's inspired it's... to be re-inspired. You yeah, know that's what, what I was just gonna ask you. Like, this, what keeps in the fashion world? These are the these are the treasures. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and not a lot of people get the opportunity to, you know, hold one, let alone own one. Um, is that part of the makeup of someone that collects or is... The, the, is that the mental state of, of people that want to invest and collect and and be a part of the fashion game? Is that is that part of the, the thing? I would say, like, like, this is vintage, you know? I would say, like, it's definitely, like, bro, it's... It's becoming like painting, basically, you know. Mm. Like honestly, like as an owner of two shops, like I can tell you that, like you can you can make money of vintage clothing. Like you can buy something and it just can grow. Obviously, it's not as big as investing in watches mm. or like uh, paintings, but like it's it's super cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You can wear it. Like mm. I love it, man. Yeah. Do you wear Pers- it? Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. You must get some serious looks with this white one, though. I love it, bro. Love like it. that's signed. Like the thing is, like this one fits me, but like even like when I got yellow, it wasn't my size. But I was like, I wanted to have it, you know. Yeah, but and also it's definitely of an age. You can feel the. Uh, it's very. Uh, you know, it's close to perish. It's, yeah. It's very delicate, bro. I got situation like um, Eric Orr. Uh, he did like first. Um, first hip hop comics um hip hop comics and he he's the only person who ever collaborate with um with Kit Haring <laughs> and in a subway and i was like i found some uh, old piece signed by him and i asked and i was like oh who is this guy i didn't know him back then <laughs> and i start google and i found him bro and i text him and he he's bro he told me so much stories about Kit Haring when when he really? when they used to go to subways when he used to do on like um chuck boards and stuff like it's crazy bro Yo, so what's his what's his instagram um eric or bro it's bro it's crazy right. dude man he did like first oh double r designs yeah. okay that's really really handy to first know. hip-hop comics bro like this like robot Oh, you see? Yo, that's crazy. See, sorry, oh, I'm completely self-absorbing myself in it. Yeah, he's got crazy comics and what a dude. Check it out. Yo, that's crazy. Or designs. So uh, you're in communication with him. So he gave yeah, you all yeah, the yeah. intel. So he get like he helped me a lot with authentication pieces and stuff, like because he know him personal. So it's well, crazy. Did he, how did you authenticate with him? Did he write something down? Officially? Like the, th- the thing is like. With those pieces, I've been lucky to got photos with artists and like even like some was old. Keith Haring wearing it? Like not wearing it, but like people who get it signed, they have uh, okay. photos from the day. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, yeah. that's like, all you need. Like this guy, like from the cab, he was student, bro, and he had photo and he we he were doing the mural with the Keith Haring. With this one, I cannot say basically, but it was like love story. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> lo- nothing better. That's art in itself, a story yeah. behind the piece. Oh. Story behind the piece? Sell the piece, bro. Yeah, it 100%. Does. It does, doesn't it? Like, bro, it's like when I, like, for example, when you will come to my shop in Covent Garden, it's like, it's so important for me to. Everyone keeps saying, why my website is so shitty, you know? <laughs> and but, uh, like, I'm not in a rush to make it like proper because I, bro- I love the conversation with my customers. I can tell them exactly. As I'm buying individual pieces, I know so much about those pieces. Really? Because I'm very often asking, where did you get it? Like, you know, what's the year? And then people that I'm buying off, they're telling me this. I'm writing it down. Then I'm like, someone getting something and I'm telling him the story. And he's, they are like, whoa. Thank you. Like, and they, 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 they love it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so this at this point, I must say that you know, check it as two stores, um, East and uh, West End. Uh, well, it's specifically Burberry. Just Burberry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you, I've been in, I've been in one, and uh, really high quality vintage. Yeah, like when I'm getting like hundred pieces, let's say. Um, 40 gonna be like no i don't want that to, to sell in a shop i just want to give people best stuff that i can you know what i'm saying do people come in and do, do, do people come in and they give you like what a, a, a collection they very often selling me like pieces in the shop very often like every day i had people like in the morning coming i got like five pieces would you like to get it i was like yeah do they do one pieces can you do one pieces mm, of course of course bro even even better even better <laughs> because it's rare like that doesn't like Sometimes, like, someone gonna bring 10 pieces, but I'm gonna get one, you know? Mm. But, like, it's just beautiful the way they're coming, approaching me, bro. It's so long, like, story, like... 
Yeah. When I started like in a genre back in my yeah, hometown. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Bro. Did you ever think that cuz did you start with fashion? Um in It was breaking. It was yeah. all about breaking like I was like me and my homie Dicker. Mm. Jorski Dicker respect. <laughs> Shout out to my brother. <laughs> so yeah, when we me and my brother we just like the truck was coming and we were like unloading the truck in a warehouse. Mm. And we were like, yo, and the ladies, they were so lovely. They they allow us to see everything beside, like, be, um, before the day bef- the day after. Mm. So we took everything, like everything was mm-hmm. the best, man. Mm. Like first pair of trousers of Barbary was like 50p for me, bro. Next day we sold it for like I don't know, 350 zloty, bro. For us, we couldn't believe it. They didn't pay us nothing for this unloading, but like you gained so much. We getting because we had we wanted to just look fresh when we were dancing, track yeah. suits. Yeah. But then we start understanding that wall, jersey from champion. We Google it like, oh, 50 zloty. We're like, oh, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. we invest like so little. Like we were investing like, let's say, when I'm going to exchange that, like one pound. Because mm. that's what, what we had. We mm. didn't have no money. But bro, mm. for one pound, we were able to make 50 pounds uh, a day. For us was like, bro. Mm. Uh, like Do the math. Dude, Just get out of here. <laughs> let's go. For us was like those 50 quid was like, you know. 20 of us were going party for a week. Yeah. <laughs> you well, know what I'm saying? Talk. But did, was that, flip, uh, that flipping culture suddenly, was, was that propelled you to get here? 100%, bro. Like 100%. So I how f- much did you have to flip? This, this is more technicals because I yeah. want to know, I want to know how you came from the, the working class of Poland to here, to where you are right now. Two shops. Like people over here don't get two shops. Like, so you had to do some serious flipping. No, bro, like, we, we're selling a lot at the moment. I don't want to say it exactly, yeah. but, like, it's big thing. Like, even the people, like, people from Supreme, people people from Barbary, like, what type of what type of people want to collaborate, want to work with us? It's helping so much, like, and um, I don't know how it happened. It was just, like, I sold one piece, I got it another two. I sold two pieces, I got four. Yeah. You know, and it was like, but bro, the the story is crazy because like, I don't know exactly when it exploded because I was like, like for the past uh, maybe three years, I'm actually living of it. Like it went so beautiful. But like before that, I was even like, during COVID. Even during COVID, because I was sponsored so, with yeah. with Depop a little bit. They were helping me ASOS Marketplace. Okay. But the thing is, um, bro, I was doing some uh, side hustle all the time, like mm. you know, carry furniture. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Just mm-hmm. to make extra bucks to, to invest more in the stock. Yo, I respect that so hard. Yeah, because basically it's, it's like so as, as much stock you got, it's better. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was like, I didn't have money. So obviously I was, everything what I sold, I put it back to the business. But then I wanted more money. Mm. I want more money to buy more stock. Yeah. Because stocks everything, especially when you're dealing with limited runs 100%, 100%. of things. Hundred percent. And then yeah. like, and yeah. then when it happened, like maybe let's say four years ago, that one one point, I was like, whoa! I start living by myself, and I was like, okay, okay, now I've done this. Yeah. I done it. Like I can now grow a little bit more. High, try, try, try. Yeah. Obviously, it, it's bro. It's it's difficult, but like I'm trying my best. You know what I'm saying? You're doing your best. You're killing it, bruv. Killing it, right, Livia? Right. Tell a real story. Uh, yo, you're killing it. And it's great to see. It's, and you're killing it. What's yo, up? Big we, respect, legend. Yo, this shit's infectious right here. That's you how know, we roll. We like that shit. Uh, what, give, me, give me one thing. Give me one thing as a... Uh, as a... Um, Olivia. As a gentleman that's moved over here to kill it in the way that you're doing it. Give me one thing that you think has served you the most, in, in, whether it's attitude, whether it's, uh, you know, just physical luck of the draw. You know, what is the one thing that you can say, yo, it could be a family, it could be anything, but what's the one key thing that you feel like serves, has served you throughout this t- timeline so far in your career? I mean, I would say like, bro, the f- like my family is like crazy, like super strong family, not mm. gonna lie. Um, but you need to adapt. You need to like wake up, bro. Nipsey hustle, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Giving back as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you said, like small, small circle is a chosen few. Like, find the people, trust. Like, find the people we can trust and grow with them. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, 
breaking, bro, like breaking. I struggle so much with breaking to get a move. Then I get it, the move. It take ages. So I was like, bro, my mental was like, okay, I struggle with breaking, but I learn. I'm gonna probably struggle with clotting, but I'm gonna get it. You know mm. what I'm saying? And it's like I was 16 when I get moves, when in the breaking after two years, learning one move. So I was like when I was 18, 19, 20, and I knew I'm going to struggle for three years, but I'm going to get this show, bro. Mm. So I would say like mixing culture helped me the most, mm. like the most. I, I took hip hop as a like, you know, mentor and I put it back to the fashion, to this vintage world. And that's how it was. Like, mm. like I was just chasing the bug, bro. Like, mm. you know, money never sleep, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hustle and motivate. That's all about like. Do you think a lot of it is because you're starting from the ground here and where, you know, it's not your country of origin. So you feel that I certainly do when I go to another country. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm inspired. I want to push myself. I, I'm starting from the beginning. Like, I love that feeling. Bro, I love UK. Like, I don't get it. Like, hmm. I, I don't want to say like, I feel like some kind of like British. No, I'm Polish. <laughs> but bro, this country made me. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Poland, it's amazing. But definitely, bro, 100%. I came here without language. You know, we were all gangsters, bro. I went to Ireland in the age like 16. First interview to clean the tables or mm -hmm. something. And bro, it, bro, I was shocked. I couldn't say a word. I was like panicking. Really? And gangsting, gangstering it was like back in Poland. Yeah. But then in, in, in Ireland, was, everything was like boom. You cannot speak. So who you are? Like you think you gangster, bro? And then language make you so small. I didn't want it to feel it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, so I was like, I just wanted to focus and I would say like, it helped me a lot. Like, new people, mm, 100%, bro. Yeah. The environment is amazing, bro. Like, first of all, in London, you can make everything. You can make any kind of dream happen, bro. You really can, can't you? It's crazy. It's the best bit. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy, like... <sighs> yeah. Say yeah. less. Say yeah, no yeah, more, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Real talk. Real talk. Um, tell me about your predictions in the ne next year of breaking. Like, where do you see where do you see it going? Uh, about myself or like sin? I think the scene. The scene is gonna be broad. It's gonna be incredible. Like, I mean, <laughs> there's some competition right now happening to do double air flare, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Like one air flare, bro. <laughs> one's enough. Yeah, one's the enough, fuck? and they, they want to do double, bro. Like, you know, like. Um, Bro, hard to tell, bro. Asia, bro, pushing hard, bro. Oh, it's it's like I hear India's on 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 the move as well. Another level, bro. Oh, like yo. no, bro. Like everyone just pushing, pushing, pushing. Polish scene, bro. I Crazy. love it. We love. Crazy. I love how we keep it rolled, but like we we own it. Like yeah, yeah. but it's roll, but we own it. Like power moves. Yeah, and British scene, bro. How British scene grow up recently? Yeah. It's amazing, like yeah. to see all of those cards, bro. You know? Characters. A lot of characters in the so, British scene as well. Yeah, I would say like mm, there is much more money because of Olympics mm. into this, which is amazing. But like for me, I don't see myself as taking money of it. Like mm. I don't want it. Like I just want this to be thing that clean my mind. And then I got somewhere else where I can take money. And it's helping. It's perfect. Like it's perfect mix because I can um, financial stable, but mm -hmm. the same way I can express myself the way I want. And so I feel like I, I, I wish for this scene that money not going to change this beautiful artist, that the money going to be there. Um, I don't know if I can predict that. I don't think so, bro, because unfortunately hip hop, we, you know how mm -hmm. it is, you know, mm -hmm. money and hip hop mm -hmm. besides rap. It's not always like, you mm -hmm. know, it's not always what it's meant to be. Exactly. So I, I would say like, I, I want for those kids to get what they deserve. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I see some crazy cats practicing on, like, on me, with, uh, practicing uh, with me and um, telling to me that, like, they are working in cafe, bro. Yeah, and they're winning yeah. every single competition every yeah. week. Yeah. And I was like, yo, that's so unfair. Yeah. You should be a millionaire. Yeah, that's right. If you will be with this type of skills in a rap game, yeah, yeah. you will be already... Being paid immediately. Pa, pa, pa. Yeah. I agree. You know what I'm saying? That that actually does blow my mind because, like you say, sometimes you speak to a, 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 a breaker and you think, "Wow, they're killing it," but they're working for a car phone. 
uh, up? call center or you know they're doing things as, as a site which is awesome 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 but like when you look at it from a street art exhibited exhibition type of way or hip hop MC rapper like they're immediately getting endorsements. They're all immediately getting record labels. It's, it's, it's a different I don't time. get it, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't get it. Like it's crazy. Yeah. You, I, mean, I mean, like you're doing all right. You got your clothing uh, set up and. But I I make this decision, bro. It was mm. so wise. Like now I understand actually how wise was this decision when mm. I was young. Like mm. that I I really decide that like, yo listen, I was like 17, 16. I was like I don't want money from breaking. Mm. I tried this. Like mm. I was doing some shows in Portugal, mm. you know, traveling a little bit, making some money. It was cool, bro, like street shows and mm. stuff, chilling with homies. But bro, like, you're not gonna feed your babies out of it, you know what I'm saying? Mm, 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 mm. And like... Does it make you sad that you can't make money for breaking or are you glad that it's... I would say like, don't hate, don't hate the game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Because you'll, you'll make you bitter, it'll make you bitter in the end, right? I don't, I don't, it's not making me sad. No. I'm just, I'm more sad when I see how much those people put uh, effort, you mm. know, to be where they are um, and they don't have enough. And mm. this makes me like sad. But the same way I love hip hop culture and bro, and it's just, you know. It is what it is. And and, and it is what it is, bro. Yeah. Like I'm I mean, accepting it'll it. It'll get better as well. Like you're saying about uh, the, the, the Olympics, it shines an immediate spotlight. Maybe not for the purists, but I know he's marry a comparison to NBA and basketball, streetball. Mm -hmm. These are two different worlds. But if you don't have the NBA, then how on earth is the streetball ever going to have a spotlight? You kind of have to have something there. But bro, like, do you remember And One? And One team there, there was like big thing that and one create group of yeah, people and they yeah. were touring all around yeah. us bro. that's right bro I, I did i did the tour it's with crazy. them it's incredible so like you see it's possible that's right it's possible to take the street yep on the yep. stage that's you right. know what i'm saying well with the, and actually people gonna love it bro yeah yeah so i toured that and one um uh, around north america and we're talking about 2007 2006 but at the time anyway um you're absolutely right they have their own audience and they have their own... A lot of the moves from NBA are illegal. They do illegal moves at mm -hmm. street ball, but that's how they do it in the street. You know what I mean? And it, I think that is an amazing saying, angle of uh, breaking that you could have. Even you, what you did, bro, like, what's up, touring with Farrell Williams? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> oh what's up, yeah. man? Come on, son! Check that out, yeah. man! Yeah. That's a big thing, man. Yeah. Don't let people forget, man. 100%, because, like, bro... Love my bro. Thank you. Yeah. It's, I mean, we make respect. moves. It, you know, uh, breaking's in this place, I guess, for where beatboxing was for me back in the day, and that is you can see the, you can see the course and where it's going to go. Just make sure you jump on the ride. Make sure you be a part of it. Like, no one can deny your um, accessibility by being part of the Olympics. No one's saying you have to adhere to all the commitment or the rules, but don't, don't move away from it, right? Just let it be. Go with the floor, bro. But, like, make it happen. Like, you know, push, mm. push. Mm. Like, I feel like we're living in the time, like, the internet can help a lot with that, mm -hmm. like, you know. And it's just, you need your friends, <laughs> mm. good plan. Mm. Just like, stay on the right path. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. 100%, bro. See? That's what it is, see? And that's that Jerry Springer sign-off right there. You're going to be seeing more of this man's face. He can be doing some fashion stuff for Street Culture TV. Come on, son. Hey. <laughs> bro, the, 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 like, the goal is one day to make, um, like, I don't know, like, I, was, I had this dream, bro, like, um, you know, like uh, Fashion Week, yeah, mm. Paris, mm. Milan. Mm. Uh, bro, can you imagine if I will do like vintage, vintage Fashion Week? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh. You can you imagine this? Take all around, like take Yo. every single copyright guy. 2023 Street Culture TV. Yeah. First of all, we need sponsors, yeah, bro. Come on, bro, get it in. <laughs> we need people. Like... Olivia, come and say hello. Come to come and say hello. Hey, come, 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 on, come, come on, Olivia. Yeah, yeah, come and say hello because you know she's there smiling all the way. Come on, y'all. That's yo. how we roll, yeah. Jordan. Um, yeah, she's, he's rolling with the models and we're rolling in with the vintage fashion business. Yo, the future's bright, my brother. Future is bright. Peace and Big love. Big boy champ right here, right here. Yeah, come on, pull and represent.
people with prints, fashion, and more. Killer Keller podcast, where out like in was out of fashion. Big shout out to everyone. Don't forget to subscribe. You stay lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Peace. Come on, son. <laughs>